6.02 p.m. and I am opening the January 18th, 2022 meeting of the Rutland Conservation Commission. Present are Peter Crane, Scott Langren, <coughs> <coughs> sorry, Skip Clark, and remotely is Jared Gentilucci. Welcome to all of our guests. Uh, wait, share, and share a like. There we go. Minutes. We're going to do everything out of order tonight, folks, but from what's in the agenda, don't worry about it. We'll get to all the important stuff we need to. So. He's still quorum. That's okay. It's, we have a quorum present, so we're allowed to hold a meeting. It's a majority of the people present right. and voting. And if that carries, he's abstaining. Right. So it's still three of us. Oh, yeah. okay. Yep, yep, yep. Motion to approve is written. I'll second. Awesome. Roll call. Clark. Aye. Right. Gentilucci. Aye. Langren. Abstain. Abstain. Crane. Aye. Uh, all right. Let's deal with the people who are here, sort of in this order. So I see. Oh, here comes somebody else. Just a second. George, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you clearly. Perfectly. So we'll, we'll you're, you're from uh, uh, DFW, yes? Sorry. Uh, yes, correct. Yep. Okay. Then let's, let me see if I can find, ah, oh, boat ramp. There, that's, that should be, <coughs> I think I'm sharing this. This is your, yep. you're basically the plan for the area, correct? Exactly. So if you don't mind giving us just a brief overview of the project as a whole. No problem. Um, so there's currently an existing boat ramp um, in basically the same orientation. Um, it's, uh, I can't say how old, but at least 30 years old. Um, similar construction, precast concrete um, planks. Um, uh, and um, over the years, the, the ice has kind of shoved them. Um, they, they're and the use of uh, the public has damaged them. So it's about time for us to um, replace it. Uh, or we plan on replacing it in a similar fashion. Um, a little more modern uh, precast concrete um, pads, um, potentially a cast in place anchor um, on the shoreline to attach the pads to, but we may be able to reuse the uh, existing one. Hmm. Um, and uh i'm not gonna know for sure to actually get in there and look at it i assume yeah i suppose once we execute as as it stands I, I have it that we're gonna do the cast in place anchor um extension just we might as well if we're there um and i also have provisions in there to uh install a, a boarding um like a floating dock system um for people to attach their boats to and um board and uh, sure. get out of their boats easier um, so that would be an improvement um, that that would be the the only thing for that really other than the floating docks would be a, a cast in place approach ramp for that um, which would be out of the water um, mm -hmm. all of our cast in place uh, work would be on dry land um, and the the uh, precast pads we assemble on land and push into the water, but we have to prepare the base for those. So we would do some in water excavation and uh, placing some stone for that. Um, and uh, we would, <clears throat> we potentially could do one ramp at a time since it's a dual ramp setup, but um, we'll, we'll see how, uh, if, if, you know, if we need to keep it open we plan on doing this either really early before the season starts or very late fall after mm. the season ends. So ideally the water would be low and there would be no one looking to use the ramps. Right. Assuming that it warms up enough to actually do the work before June. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the spring <laughs> will definitely be tough. We basically are assuming this is probably going to be a late fall type project uh, and, and Maybe not even this year, but I, it, it all depends on funding and how we move money around. But um, 
this will be something that we do in house with our own um, personnel and uh, some. We have some equipment that we could use, and um, so yeah, it's kind of something we could just, if we needed to, to fill in some work, we would we would work on this. Sure. Uh, okay. Questions from the commission? Oh, no. All right. For those who are interested, <laughs> all commissions, commissioners, uh, the, this whole NOI is up on our Google Drive. Tamika put it up there. I actually open up a lot of this stuff, but I don't think we need to. Uh, if there are no more questions, then I think uh, the submission is ready to go, and we'll meet in two weeks. Hearing? Yep. So we'll do the hearing on the first, February first. Yes. Okay. Yep. That's that's great. Okay. Um, perfect. Thanks, All right, thank you very much. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Tamika. No problem. Here are some of these windows. Oh, yeah, there's a full blown document in there. All right. Uh, so let's go for this submission quickly for the change to the dam and Pomegusset Road. I believe I saw. James James is, Hill is here. Oh, and John Morgan is here. So please take it away. Okay, good evening. My name, this is John Morgan, CHA. I'm the design manager for the project. Uh, James Hall is also with me here tonight. He's uh, our environmental permitting specialist. Uh, yes, we uh, just filed the notice of intent for the uh, Rehabilitation Improvements of Pomegranate Road, Route 56. Uh, this is a town of Rutland DPW uh, proponent, the, the proponent, the applicant for the project. Uh, the project is the reconstruction of this roadway. Uh, Mass DOT is involved in the project. Uh, they are reviewing and improving the design and will be responsible for the construction administration of the project due to the type of funding um, that is being used for construction. Uh, that's funded through the Transportation Improvement Program. So it's state and federal construction funding. So uh, we have to have everything approved by the DOT. Um, just a quick overview of what the project limits are. Uh, it's it's uh, Route 56 starting at Main Street does not include the intersection of Route 122A. We'll be starting just uh, just north of the intersection, doing the, the, uh, the ramps at the uh, corners, but not including the full intersection. And it'll continue north to Brunel Drive, um, approximately one, not one mile. Um, within the limits of the project is the Molten Dam, uh, Pond Dam uh, improvements. So that will be constructed as part of the project. However, that has already been permitted under a separate NOI uh, that mm -hmm. was uh, extended back in October. So this NOI is mainly focused on the roadway improvements that are being proposed along the, the mile long uh, corridor. Um, and the purpose of this project is really to address the deteriorating infrastructure and enhance safety for uh, all roadway users, making it a more complete street uh, friendly for bicycles and pedestrians. Uh, some of the improvements include pavement rehabilitation, uh, widening of the road to uh, provide five foot shoulder to bicycle lanes, um, adding a sidewalk on one side of the road, that would be the, uh, the east side of the roadway. Well, for the full length of the project, we'll have a new sidewalk. And then uh, the extensive drainage improvements being made as well. Um, and then at the north end of the project, we will have a wetland replication area, and that's for some of the impacts that the dam had. Um, we'll be uh, doing some replication uh, adjacent to an existing wetland at the northern project limits. Um, and then I guess I'll let Jay just give a quick overview of some of the permitting uh, aspects of the project. Go ahead, Jay. Thank you, Mike. We have four wetlands um, along the one mile area. We're not gonna be impacting any of them. The only thing that the road project is going to impact is a little bit of riverfront area outside of where the dam project is located and then buffer zones. As John indicated, uh, we have 1,044 square feet of BBW replication 
at the northwest end of the project to account for uh, the uh, some losses within the dam part itself. But really, there's no other impacts to resource areas, and the reason we're coming forward with the NOI to CONCOM is because of impacts or at least work within the riverfront area and buffer zone. Um, I guess that's it for what I was going to say. Do you guys have any questions? Um, without getting into too much detail, I'm. it's a little unusual for the replication to be that far away from the impacted area. I mean, it's where it needs to be, I suppose, but is there no space nearer the dam where we could do the replication? No, there isn't. As a matter of fact, we were happy that we could get it there. We were thinking <laughs> there was all right. any replication at all. Okay. So, we were just happy to have that spot. So I see Joe Buckley's on also. I have a fast question for whoever can answer it. Um, from the paperwork, it looks like the two projects are being combined into one. So this is say the dam and the rest and all of the all of the road work is now going to be considered a single project. Am I interpreting that correctly? That is correct. It'll go out as one contract uh, through Mass DOT. It is one one single project. Uh, does this impact the timing of when we thought the dam might be done versus when the whole road will be done? Now that's not a uh, jurisdictional question. Please, this is not a this is not a regulatory question. This is a me being nosy and trying to understand <laughs> question. Yeah, I mean the the schedule for the dam has changed uh, multiple times due to the change in funding, but uh, this will allow. Uh, Right now, it's scheduled to go to construction next next spring in mm -hmm. 23. Um, the project needs to be advertised by September of this year. Um, that's the end of this federal fiscal year in order to uh, keep their place on the transportation improvement program. And uh, assuming that it gets advertised in the fall, uh, then I think the Construction would start early next year, with the bulk of it probably next spring. Okay. Uh, and then I see that you need a, a 401 water quality. I, I, I took a look at some of the permits. Do you think your timeline is feasible? Uh, yes, uh, based on the permitting. So the permitting required, uh, we're doing a... In, a modification, a uh, notice of project change for the ENF. So we we're modifying the ENF that was done originally for the dam. Mm -hmm. um, so we're we're hoping that that will go quickly. Uh, the I guess the 401 water quality cert was also done for the dam, and we are just giving them a a letter, basically explaining what changes have been made since that approval. We already have the uh, the certificate for that as well. Um, same thing with the Army Corps of Engineers. That, that's correct, right, Jay? We have those per permits from the original dam permitting, and we're just notifying them of some minor changes at the dam. I, I, yeah, I would think that they would all be considered minor changes because the rest of the wetlands impact really don't impact anything, I would think. Well, of course, that's me not, <laughs> not being a, a scientist about this. Um, so if you wouldn't mind again briefly going over roughly where the wetlands impacts are or the buffer impacts. Jay, I mean, be, I, and I mean that beyond the dam itself. We've been through that enough. Um, the buffer, basically, um, there's four wetlands, wetland A, B, C, and D, are appropriate. <laughs> We're uh, not too imaginative there, <laughs> naming our wetlands. Wetland B is associated with the dam itself. Mm -hmm. uh, the buffer zone outside of the uh, work is permitted for the dam in 2018. There's a very small amount of riverfront area as well. Um, wetlands C and D occur uh, on the west side of the road, uh, moving up toward Brunel Drive. Mm -hmm. And then actually beyond Brunel Drive is where our replication area is going to be. Right. And then uh, on the to the south of the dam, 
is uh, Wetland A, which is a bit off the side of the road, and we're just doing a little bit of um, impact to um, to that buffer zone as well, the outer 50 feet or so or more. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's basically where the buffer zone work is going to be. Uh, most of the work has already been per permitted is with the dam. Right. And then just some, an additional permit that we're um, pr providing to Alan Rantana uh, mm -hmm. with the DRC um, for the um, Zone A public water supply is a DCR WSPA, which is Wetland Watership Protection Act. Yep. That permit is going to go in to notify him that of the changes with the road. But for all intents and purposes, the 401, the Corps of Engineers, and um, the DCR all the work is associated associated with the uh, the dam itself mm -hmm. and is really impacts with the road work okay questions from the commission no nope. no nope. we're good all right i think we're good to go then uh february one okay great yep, we'll be good. great then we're all set thank you very much all right. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thanks. Hey, yourself. John. Be, before you go, could you just um, explain that that permit that was um, we got exempt from, just so that this group is aware? Oh. <laughs> um, chapter ninety one is the Waterways Protection Act mm -hmm. that often refers to um, coastal resources, tidelands. However, it does apply to navigable waters and to great ponds. Molten Pond is not a great pond in its natural form. It has to be 10 acres or more. That's the definition of a natural pond. Mm -hmm. If the dam was not there, it would be less than 10 acres. So it does not actually qualify as a great pond. Um, DCR, excuse me, Chapter 91, the P, uh, recognizes the area bet look, uh, between mean high and mean low water of a great pond as public resource, similar to high and low, uh, low water tides. Sure. They also, they also recognize um, navigable waters. The fact that we have Molten Pond Dam and less than 200 yards downstream, a private dam, there's really no navigable water in there. And navigable water being something as, as simple as uh, paddling a canoe up a stream and having some sort of goods that you're selling. Um, that's that's the archaic term of it, but that's essentially what we're using for navigable waters. So originally, we talked to um, the DEP in Boston, and they were taking a conservative view, and then Mass DOT talked to them again and said, look, we've had many projects like this exempt before, and they looked at it again and said, okay, we understand it's exempt. Even though pu the, um, there's going to be public funds spent to um, improve and rehabilitate the dam, because there's no real nexus, there's no great pond, there's now, uh, you know, less than 200 yards of navigable water, two dams, it really is impractical. And so that was, uh, the exemption is going to be coming, I assume, pretty shortly. We were told last week um, by email that uh, they were going to be sending the exemption out. So that was taken off the uh, docket, I, so, so to speak, um, when originally I thought maybe it was it was acquired in 2018, and we were a little bit surprised in 2020. One, with just the road part that it was being acquired, so was, I'll just leave it at um, <laughs> it was a mistake. <laughs> yeah. Who would have thought? Common sense won out. Huh. Mm -hmm. All right. Does this mean, oh, does anybody else? Does this mean we're going to be on the February 1st uh, meeting to present the project to the public? <laughs> yes, indeed. Does anybody else have any questions? Anybody else? Anybody? I just wanted to Everybody thank else? you, James. Thanks, John. You're welcome. Have a good evening, everyone. Thanks. Have a great night. Take care. Thank you, you too. Uh, uh, I do advise that the commission read all the documentation in that. There's quite a lot. Quite a lot. <clears throat> Uh, okay, well, I see Mark Elbeg is here, and so we're going to open the public hearing for the notice of intent for 76, uh, 276 Palma Gusset Road. Mark, here you go. 
He's still, yeah, he's still here. Okay, I, I'm not sure his mic is working. Hmm. Is, he, is he telling us to wait one minute? Who does he, he, he think he is? <laughs> if that was the correct finger for that. Oh, well, it wasn't to me, so yeah. <laughs> Oh, can you hear me now? There it is. Yeah, he was he had the wrong audio routing into Zoom. <laughs> no, I was I was talking, but no one was listening. <laughs> so this is a proposed addition. Uh, I don't know if it's it's um, two car garage removal of an existing deck in some driveway area, with the addition containing mostly garage with a small breezeway area. Not a lot of site work or grading. It's mostly going to fit kind of into the existing landscape at mostly existing elevations. Um, <clears throat> it is close proximity to the pond and uh, we've shown some erosion control there. And again, I don't think it's a ton of site work. Um, and we've also filed with DCR since it's, this is all covered by the Watershed Protection Act. Mm -hmm. We do have a DEP number as well. Yeah, in fact, I just saw that the other day. That's yeah. good. Without yep. comments, which is even more great. Mm -hmm. um, yes. So, so Mark, what is? I'm trying to point here in a way that you can, hopefully you can see the the mouse. So, what yep. again is the distance from this corner to that flag? Uh, or even this might be a smidge closer, but let's just call. Yeah, it I flag. think it. I think it was like. Um, I think it was like 15 feet. I don't have it right in front of me. <laughs> On the order, uh, in the order, close to about 15 feet, I believe. Right. Uh, so Jared and I did a site walk, a very, very cold site walk on Saturday. Uh, Jared, why don't you tell them what we saw? Sure. So I think, Mark, we did see some stakes that were placed. Were those to mark the corners of the addition? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Here, here, and here, I'm, I think. The owner, Kevin, actually went up there and pulled some tape off his house and laid it all out. Awesome. Okay. Thank you for doing that. That was helpful. So yeah, Peter and I walked it Saturday morning um, just to get a sense of uh, the proximity. We did see the stakes, proximity to where the wetland flags are. I think you had noted during the last meeting that the wetland flagging was a little bit on the conservative side, which I would agree with. It did look like your flags were, you know, kind of at basically the edge of the backyard and I'm no wetland scientist. It's possible maybe the wetlands are even a little further away, but we certainly appreciate being more conservative than less conservative. Um, I think the, the big thing I noticed, or Peter and I noticed, was there are a few decent sized trees that are just behind the addition. And one of my questions was, I was just curious if the plan is to remove some of those trees, all of those trees, if you had a plan for, are there any you want to maintain, or is it are they all going to have to come out? I think the owner is trying to save mostly all those trees up against the wetlands. The only thing that I think he's looking to take down, and unfortunately he couldn't make it tonight, but he wanted to, I think the only thing he may take down is some of those large white pines. I know they they make a mess. They generally have a shallow, shallow and weak root system. Mm -hmm. So I think he, he may not have the money to do it, but I think while he's in there, any any large tree removal will be those white pines. So as Jared said, we liked the uh, the flag locations. Uh, I, I'm liking the erosion control line. It looks like the right spot. Uh, single or double silt fence on that one? There, it's not that steep, but I'm just wondering. Single. It's only a, it's not much of an excavation. Yeah. And actually, how much excavation will there be? How? I mean, how, you have to go down four feet. Four feet for the for the footers, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's gonna be there's gonna be no basement. It's just gonna be frost wall, uh, okay. and there's really gonna be almost no regrading of the site because everything's gonna match existing sill elevation and then tie into the existing driveway. So it's it's really gonna be very limited site work. Yeah. Okay. Other questions from the commission? No. No. Mark, what, just one other quick question. I assume. The answer to this will be yes, but I'm assuming you guys will approach the construction from 
the front of the house, the street side, not really have any big machines on the back side of the property, right? Yeah, certainly. I don't even think there's room back there. And it's, yeah, it's small enough where we can do everything from the front. Okay. Uh, I'll open it to the public. Any questions from the public? Are there any special conditions we want to think about for this property? Is there any reason not to close this hearing? No, there's no, no reason not to close this. I'll take a motion. Mm -hmm. Motion closed. Second. Uh, roll call. Gentilucci. Aye. Langren. Aye. Clark. Aye. Crane, aye. All right. Um, <clears throat> We have no special conditions, mm -hmm. so we can just do the standards. So I'd like a motion to sign the standard order of conditions for 276 Palmagusset. So moved. Second. Second. Okay. You've deserved. Roll call. Clark. Aye. Genelucci. Aye. Landgren. Aye. Crane, aye. I checked out. Oh, Mark, we need the check. 35 bucks. 35? Yeah, 35. Oh, I'll have a... Uh... Yeah, I'll have Kevin drop that off tomorrow. Sorry about that. Slacker. <laughs> that was my fault. I, I don't think I told him. So we're closed. We've got conditions. We're set. Yep. Good night, Mark. Moving on. Have a great night. <laughs> Thanks, right. Mark. Thank you, folks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Can you just call us folks? Folks? <laughs> really? You're old enough to be a folk, right? Well, we're Is that rude? Should I use a different term? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hit the hang-up button yet. I know. Not yet. Nope. Everyone, say hi, Mark. Good night. All right, now we're going to deal with this RDA because it's one of the things. Well, we've got to start cranking on some of this. No, actually, we're, we're doing okay for uh, mm -hmm. for the duty. So we have no one here to discuss this RDA. So, uh, Jared, I'll let you talk about our site walk again, besides it being cold and snowy. Yeah, it was beautiful Saturday morning. I, I don't know what the temperature was, but my hands froze when I took them out of my pocket, so I didn't take them out very long. But yeah, we, we walked the site. There was a lot of snow cover, so we weren't able to see you know everything clearly, but we were able to see the wall that was recently built. I believe it was, um, I believe the owner mentioned it was just a, a versa lock, modular block wall. Um, I forget the exact length, but I, I think in the, I wanna say maybe in the RDA, he noted around 50-ish feet. Uh, included a set of stairs, and we did see silt fence and straw wattles. I'm going to say on the, I'm trying to get my bearings here. Well, when we were looking at the house with the pond in front of us, it was on the right side of the house. There was a silt fence with straw wattles, and then on the left side of the house. I'll, I'll pull it up uh, on just Jared so everybody can see it. Yeah, uh, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Peter, what I remember is the left side, we did see a straw wattle. I don't think we saw a silt fence on the left side of the house but that it was also correct. um it was a, it was a smaller area um that needed erosion control wow. but it was just silt fence on i'm oh, sorry straw wattle on the left side you are very angry that's bad. we weren't really able to see if the ground area around the wall what the condition is what the material is everything was covered in snow so um weren't able to confirm if you know, any areas need to be stabilized, which we're anticipating probably will need to be in the spring. Right. So, in fact, what Jared and I were thinking was that the uh, maybe we ought to have a condition that the, the wattles and fence stay up until um, inspection in, in, in spring. You inspect. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, that the. All right, so yeah, the fence is right along at uh, the wall, excuse me, is right along. There's a little stairway here and it continues around here and then shoots up here. And then there's another wall that was already existing up here. So it's, it's pretty much a terrace. So the highest terrace is at street level. The wall that was replaced was this lower terrace. And because the snow was there, we have no idea if he finished it with stone or with lawn or dirt or anything. We don't know any of that right now. Uh, I will note something not related to this RDA is Jared and I were both concerned about runoff down here because uh, uh, something, water runoff is 
eating into that has basically eaten away at a lot of the the ground cover here and it's i didn't see how far down it went because i wasn't sure exactly where the property line is and uh, I, and it was I was aware it was cold and it was icy and snowy. So I didn't go down far enough to really see this, but this is this area is something we probably need to keep an eye on. Because if this is eroding, then it's only gonna get worse as it works its way up the hill and it's gonna feed right into this pond. So as I say, nothing to do with the RDA before us. Because that's why it originally came before us. That's why Jennifer knew about it, right? Yes. I'll bet. Yeah, because I remember right, because I was here for that, and I think she said, somebody said it was whatever, and then she saw the wall was done. Right. So, in fact, I mean, there was... <clears throat> the, the, the silt fence and the waddles start basically at the road and mm -hmm. go all the way down and then cut in around here, and mm -hmm. they actually missed the corner of the house by six inches. Mm -hmm. So there's a small gap there, you know, it happens. And again, I did we couldn't see if there's anything, but there were no, there was no overt sign of a problem mm -hmm. during the work. Okay. And as Jared said, this side had no silt fence or wattle and there was, you know, all this, the stair work and the rest mm -hmm. of the wall, it was, there was stuff done, which, mm -hmm. but in the absence of information, we uh, just go on. Peter, just to clarify, there was a waddle on the south side of the house, just a, a short section. Oh, you're right. There was one. Yeah, over. yeah there it, was, it was a kind of buried in the, It was partially buried in the snow, but yeah. no silt fence on the south side, just a waddle. Right. Thank you. That's right. Yep. So, any questions? To remain in place until inspection in the spring. Or do we want to abstract that a little more to say until the ground is stabilized? Stabilized. Yeah. Until the ground is stabilized. That's that's the right way to do it. Shall be maintained. Shall be maintained, maintained is yes. better. That's, in place that's also work. true. <clears throat> going to say it, it won't be before april end of april because then you get run off and whatever yeah then we can actually and, watch it and you can see what's there and, I'm, and then we can I, I wonder, that I wonder if that swaley thing is yeah. if that's natural road drainage what you can do about it <laughs> uh maybe they could put some riprap into maybe mm -hmm. i don't know mm -hmm. but we should look at that yeah all right peters is that is that right i know this is unrelated to the rda but is that right of way there that we looked at is that um, is that town property, or do we know who owns that? Oh, you mean this? Oh, that is definitely not town property. No, no, no I meant the I meant houses. the strip. It, yeah, oh, in between. that's a right of way. Oh, that is a right of way, isn't it? So you have to see who owns it. Oh, see, if I came and go. <laughs> when I click here, it's not going to click on anything. It's if I click here, it's still not going to do anything. Awesome. Oh, wait, what does that say? Exempt. Temperance Society Inc. Interesting. Yeah, those are the people who run the the park. Yeah, so the park owns it. So it's not even these people's thing. Yeah, we should look at it. Yeah, we should figure out how to reach them. Which shouldn't be that hard. Right. I would think. Well, I would say we have a concern with it. Yeah, that's, exactly. That's, that's, that's all letter, we have to do. Let it can go now. Yeah. All right, so I think uh, we need a we need a motion to make a negative determination on Forty Eight Finn Park Road for reason three. I'm going to remember this time. With one special condition. With one special condition. So moved. Second. 
Roll call, Lundgren. Aye. Clark. Aye. Gentilucci. Aye. Crane, aye. There we go. Do you want to have something to make us send a letter to these people? Yeah, would you? If we can, if we can find it and just say there's a problem with... Right, we think there might be a problem on this right eight, away. 18, was it? Yeah, but... What would you like their, their follow-up steps to be? Do you want them to come There's an erosion problem on Paso 18. Um, I don't think there's anything that we can or should do during the winter. No, but I think we should, we're just making them aware, <clears throat> and then we'll follow. We will follow up with them in the spring, right. so we can properly yep. evaluate and then determine what what action should be taken. Right. Okay. And if you're gonna put a note for April for the other one, okay. have a note for this. Yeah. Because okay. we'll forget about it, especially Peter. Yeah, especially. <clears throat> All right, so now it's 48 and Park Road. Ah, so Mr. Willis, are you here for the oil spill? No, that was George. No, that was George. He was our, we already spoke with him. He's just hanging out, having a good old time. Yeah, just hanging out. <laughs> hmm? I, I know we're a fun group and all. So, uh, again, taking things out of, this is, this is, actually go back to the agenda, the emergency cert request because of a fuel oil spill. Uh, appro the uh, approximately 250 gallons of oil spilled at, what is that, 92? 42, 42 Glenwood Road. Uh, so this is just sort of how DEP looks at things. You can see that Glenwood is barely on the outside of this circle, which is, uh, I think it's just a straight, it's not area of effect. It's just, there's a half mile and a 500 foot radius around it, because that's, that's their standard practice. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna <coughs> shoot up to the letter. Good, so. They noticed it, da, 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 da. The release was detected on January, January 4, at which time the IRA activities, the initial response activity, I think, uh, were performed to address the source of the release and to mitigate indoor air impacts to the residents. A good choice, since it was in the basement. The following day, fuel oil was observed to be discharging from the building perimeter drain and within zone A of a class A, now that I've hidden it, mm -hmm. water body. Uh, so they're going through to work to get to it. Now I will also roll up here to the most recent email. Uh, da, da, da. Please note the Mass DEP approved the activity, da, da, da. and there were no release-related impacts identified in the wetland area or surface water bodies. That's good news. Mm -hmm. uh, so there was a fuel oil spill, and they want to do work, and the DEP's already said, here are the things you need to do. And so they have submitted an emergency certification form. And I don't think there's a whole lot of... Oh yeah. Excavation, dewatering, removal of ELK, advanced soil borings and convert to monitoring wells as needed, yep. Assess soil and ground. This is this is just like, well, it's not. It's very similar to what happened up at the <coughs> campsite last year. Last year? Yeah, mm -hmm. River Road. River, yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. So. Uh, same same person, same company too. Oh, is it? I didn't mm -hmm. notice that. Yep. So, can anyone think of a reason to not sign this emergency cert form? Mm -hmm. uh, I'll make a motion to the chair sign in behalf of the Conservation Commission. Nah, no, she signs all, electronically. She takes care yeah, of it all. Everybody all right. can. So we don't have to do that stuff. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, I don't know what else we need to do to talk to <coughs> him, other you know, or, or to the lender owner or whatever, just to to get periodic reports. Sure, I can ask. Adam, for that. He did do that with the DEP does a pretty good job that. of keeping this. Okay. Yeah. Trust me, I know. I've been, I've been on the other side of this. Huh, thank you. <laughs> huh, okay. It's a, it's a pretty big thing. 
you know, get engineers and all the other stuff. It's a pretty, they do a pretty good job with it. All right. Good. Ah, <clears throat> uh, so we have a motion. Second. Uh, all in favor? Gentilucci. Aye. Clark. Aye. Langren. Aye. Crane. Aye. Uh, <coughs> Let's just take a up. Oh, no, 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 no. Just close the current tab. Let's not do that. Let's get rid of that. And that. All righty. Uh, we have no news on the conservation restriction. No. Moving on. Uh, I have heard nothing on Turkey Hill. Uh, no, I sent a letter to the property owners. I provided them with my information and asked them to reach out, and I have not heard. Okay. Uh, I don't think we have any new news on the detention basin. Uh, we, well, just the conversation that I had with Gary Domain from the DEP. Okay. That he, um, is not happy about this. He's put it on his radar. He was just coming back from surgery. Oh. Um, and he did not like that we've been requesting these stormwater reports and it goes unanswered. So he said it's within the commission's authority that if NOIs come before us for anything in Grace Lemon, to withhold issuing them until we get what we've requested from them. He said it's going to be very difficult for him to obtain all of those reports um, that we have requested just because of the way that they're filed and the way that things operate. He said it's just such a huge file and they're mm. working remotely right now. So he, he would like to see Klee respond to our requests for the reports. Okay. Um, I don't want to take action at this meeting. I think I want to have a more full commission and a little more time to think before we act. So we'll keep this on and we'll think about how we're going to react for the next meeting just because Jared's only got about five minutes. So as much as I want to get to 165 Cannon Road. Why don't we just ask Lou to come in? Just ask Lou to come in. You, you can ask him. We can try. I'll bet, he, he, I'll bet he puts Tom in instead of himself. As long as the body shows up, I really don't care. Put him on the spot. Gentlemen, and that's nicely knowing he does well if you really ask him. Jen went back down again on Friday. She emailed us some pictures um, of what she took. She said the riser was, was gone. Um, so, you know, they're still not thrilled with the process in which the water is being released. Right. So, that's right. still on their radar, too. Okay. So would you like me to email him and ask him to attend the next meeting? Yeah. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's, let's turn up the fire. Turn up the heat a little bit. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm going to skip 165 Cannon Road. There's a fascinating email that everybody should read from DCR about that on the Google Drive. Um, we're going to skip the web page. We'll carry that to next time mm -hmm. because I think we really need to talk about Ridge Road and Wachusett Street. Wachusett Road. Road, excuse me. Oh, that's right, because Wachusett Road, ugh. It's different. Ugh, yes, it is. Wachusett Road is nowhere near Wachusett Street. Wachusett Road is a little piece of, a little strip of land in Rutland that connects to an actual street in Princeton mm -hmm. that is a town road that hasn't been maintained. Yeah. 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 Uh, so right, what right, put right, this right, right on from Mr. Zotley's property? <laughs> yes, that's exactly correct because they're A and Ring the whole. I know the whole thing. Yeah, I've walked it. I've been on it. <laughs> okay. Well, fine. Yeah, mm -hmm. been on there. You know, yeah. it's fine. They got prompted it by the approval of the A and R last week, um, and a buyer to the property on Ridge Road, um, Bob Soderberg, emailed today um, with some concerns about uh, wetlands that were not shown on the A and R plan that was presented. Um, he included some attachments in his email that he thought might be helpful. <coughs> yeah, I'm just trying to, to actually locate it here in GIST land. Is that it right here? So Bob, I believe is at 3 Ridge Road? Yep, that thing that the GIST yeah, system calls no name is actually Wachusett Road. Yeah, yeah, because that was all the mink. Uh, am I ink? Those mink are all found. there's a mink found. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So here, let me first do that. I believe he said that there were two streams that he believes will impact 
about seven of the 22 lots. But that's fine, but that doesn't stop A and R. Bro, not required, just means they're. Well, it, it I could his stop the. Was that the engineer didn't. Well, Julian did. No, or dress. Well, I don't know. the concern is that, and in fact, I had a very fast conversation with the plan with a couple of planning board members today. Mm -hmm. If the shape of the lots makes them unusable frontage because of the wetlands, then it's not a legal A and R. That's yeah, that's right because it, it it can't be real frontage if the wetlands prevents them from getting access to the property through that thing that they have marked as frontage. If there is actually so, what are they asking? Certain, what are they asking us for? So, yeah, uh, the fast answer is that planning isn't asking us for anything, but this citizen has come forward saying, uh, making a few contentions about wetlands that are not mapped. That's why I showed mm -hmm. the wetland space here. That's mapped there. So basically, if you're doing one of those, you'd have to ask, i.e., for the plan of what they actually mapped out, that well, Julian he mapped. Did that he did attach the ANR to his email. It's in the ConCon email in the box. Uh, yes, I'm going there right now, trying to ignore all that new email that came into my inbox. Uh, probably this one. No, not that one. Wrong answer. Oh yeah, that's the one. Uh, so, for everybody's knowledge, this is the NR form. I don't, ah, there's the map. I'm going to get this thing out of our way. So, this is mm -hmm. that no name slash Wachusett Road, mm -hmm. which connects to Old Brook Station Road in Princeton. Uh, and now let's go to, what is this image? Uh, that image doesn't give us anything useful, so I'm going to ignore it. And this image, oh, that image is a little more interesting. So I bolt, it is my belief for the moment. <laughs> That's just Title V setback areas, tradition of the wetlands. And the two streams not indicated. All right, so hold on. Oh, okay, so these are the Title V buffer areas, fine. But that, so that could impact, hold on, let's go back to the ANR. That could impact a, some number of these lots. And what is this one supposed to be? That's nothing. It doesn't show me a lot of anything. So I don't see, I see, I've now put up everything he's, he's sent. I've looked at it. I don't see anything that shows where he thinks streams are unless he's calling these thing streams. And it's unclear if they're perennial or intermittent or what. So we don't we don't know a lot today. Right. So I don't know what we can do today. Well my question is what I mean, who's asking for what? That's what I don't understand. Uh, I mean, he's pointing out that there might be streams there, but you're going, okay. Well if it's if there are streams oh here we go. But that's every individual lot then gets taken on an individual lot basis. Same as anybody else does. There I'm missing something. <clears throat> ah, request the Rutland Conservation Commission look into the matter and before any future work is done in this proposed activity, so it means building on the ANR lots. But he's not here tonight. Is that even available? No, I, 
I asked him, and he unfortunately was not able to come tonight. Right. But he said he could make it to the next meeting, and he was also open to doing a site a site walk from his property. All right. We are on the edge of losing Jared. Mm -hmm. So all we can do tonight is introduce this. Mm -hmm. um, yep. And that's as much as we can do tonight. So mm -hmm. we'll carry this forward. We'll we'll. This might be number one on the agenda after the hearings. Okay. Which is going to make a long meeting, <laughs> but so on February one. Mm -hmm. Can you drag that down? Well, Mr. Chair, mm -hmm. just quick before you go. Yes. Um, this is Joe from DPW. Hey, Joe. We did extensive research on Wachusett Road. It is considered a public road. Yeah. Um, if you need us at that next meeting, please let me know. We'll let you know. I don't think so, but we'll let you know for sure, Joe. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, Bye, Jared. It's time. <laughs> Let's get a motion, please. I'm surprised it's not from Jared. To what? To adjourn? Yeah. Second. Uh, roll call. Langren. Aye. Gentilucci. Aye. Clark. Aye. Crane, I. We're adjourned. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you in two weeks.